morning. I'm just eating my oil bran. <laughs> I put golden syrup on it today. Just maybe like half a teaspoon. And it's made it slightly better. It still tastes like cardboard mush, but that's a little bit more doable. Hi. Um, I look like a foot today, but I'm actually feeling amazing. <laughs> it's literally just because I've just woken up. Um, Toby's trying to eat my cereal. You can have some of the milk at the end. But you can't have the cereal. Because that's mommy cereal, isn't it? Um, yeah, welcome to 24 weeks. I feel like these, um, these updates have become a little bit more sporadic because not a lot to report. Um, but I thought, because we're now officially six months pregnant, I've been pregnant for half a year. How bonkers is that? I was sat there the other day thinking about it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it's been half a year. Um, it feels like it's whizzing by. And I feel, I feel like in the first trimester, you kind of wish it away a little bit because you just want to feel better. But then when you get out of that, you're like, okay, you can slow down now because I'm actually really, really enjoying this. And it feels like it's coming very, very soon. But at the same time, you're also really excited to meet baby, which we both really are. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a, it's a weird mix of emotions, but I'm feeling amazing. I am absolutely loving being pregnant. I feel like I'm in my element. Um, I've never felt so confident, so attractive. <laughs> Genuinely, I, I I know I look a little bit dishevelled this morning, but I feel so sexy and powerful and strong and confident and I don't know, I'm just here for this sort of, this feminine energy and I know not everybody feels that way, I, I, I find it really interesting how, it, it's, just, it's wonderful isn't it, how different we all are. Did you hear that little squeak, that was Toby's yawn. You're so cute. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with him. Um, yeah, I find it so amazing how different we all are in regards to these things. But for me, I am definitely in the, I love being pregnant spectrum. I think even when I was in the first trimester and feeling absolutely dreadful, I still loved the fact that I was pregnant. I just didn't like the symptoms. Um, so I'm so grateful and so happy that I'm able to just fully embrace it and enjoy it now. Um, and we're just constantly crossing fingers that that nausea stays away because I've heard that it sometimes comes back in the third trimester. So for now we're okay. Do sometimes still get it at night time though, <clears throat> which is very strange, isn't it? I don't know if it's because baby is more active at night because they definitely are very, very active at night time. Um, so I don't know if it's that that maybe causes the nausea, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just wonderful. It's fantastic. I'm excited and I feel... I feel great. <laughs> I wrote down some notes <laughs> because I feel like, because like the weeks tend to like blur into one another and now there's like no specific week by week symptoms. And it's hard to keep track of. Uh, so yeah, I just wrote a few things down. Symptoms wise, um, the thing that I've noticed recently and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in any of my previous updates is the pelvic pain. <laughs> like it feels like if I go, like I went to the gym yesterday for the first time throughout this entire pregnancy, which I'm not ashamed about because I've just been listening to my body and she hasn't been ready to go to the gym yet. But I did absolutely love it. Um, so I'll definitely be going back. I didn't do anything drastic, literally just like, maybe half an hour on the cross trainer, bobbing up and down, not going too hard. And then like an incline walk. Well, I actually did a strut workout, <laughs> which made me feel so good. Um, Cause you basically like set your pace and you put this workout, this playlist in, and then you just strut. <laughs> and I loved it. Um, but yeah, I absolutely adored the gym, but any kind of exercise, like even just walking or any like high bouts of activity, I feel like I've been punched in the vulva. <laughs> it's really strange. It's like this just sort of bruised, heavy, painful, achy feeling right in your pelvic bone, basically. Um, apparently it's totally normal and it's obviously like the extra pressure from baby, but um, yeah, that's, um, that's a whole new thing. That's a ride, but I don't mind it. I actually, I weirdly don't mind it. Um, the general aches and pains, like definitely shoulders and my lower back, 
and in my like around my rib cage like my intercostal muscles very very achy I don't know if it's because my ribs are maybe expanding if things are like starting to move up um but yeah aches and pains everywhere but again dealing with it taking it like a boss actually not too bothered about those at the moment they're probably going to get worse and harder to deal with but right now I'm like okay now I can deal with this this is cool <laughs> my skin is actually really good apart from this like one little thing here I don't think it's a spot I think it's like an ingrown hair <laughs> you know like the peach fuzz on your face I think it might be one of those that's kind of like ingrown because it feels it doesn't feel like a spot so if you ignore that my skin is actually fairly decent for me anyway I've never I'm never gonna have perfect skin but my skin's actually really good it's still very dry everywhere is dry my hair is dry my skin is dry my arms my legs get so itchy at night time because they're so so dry um so I'm just slathering on cocoa butter wherever I can I'm trying to pop it over bump and stuff because that sometimes feels a little bit tight as well obviously where the skin is stretching I haven't got any stretch marks yet sure I will pick some up along the way um, but I haven't got any at the moment and yeah just like I feel I feel fairly normal to be honest just on the drier side to where I normally sit <laughs> and the only other thing is that I am starving all the time like so so hungry I could just eat and eat and eat and if we have like a big meal I sit there and I eat it all and I'm like oh I'm stuffed and then half an hour later I'm like could eat that again <laughs> it's just insatiable hunger all the time um, so that's becoming difficult to deal with because I'm just kind of like I want to eat as, as well as possible so I'm trying to get like good fiber and fruit and my veggies and lots of protein in um, and like you know really decent nutritionally good food but I just need so much of it <laughs> I'm just I'm always hungry this morning I woke up at half past five and I was in bed and my tummy was in pain I was that hungry I nearly had to get up and go downstairs and have some secret toast because I was just so so hungry and if it happens again I'm gonna bloody do it because obviously babe it needs feeding so who am I to say no to that speaking of feeding babe it we have 100% got a bump going on now let me show you this is a pregnancy bump again it looks tiny on this thing i swear i look really pregnant in real life maybe it's just where my clothes are um but yeah that's my bump look at it isn't it beautiful i feel like my tummy button is um stretching <laughs> now especially at night time when i've eaten lots it's like hanging on for dear life so i don't know how long it's going to be before that pops out i feel like mine may be quite big for 24 weeks but then again this is half a year's pregnant and baby's quite big now i think baby's the size of um an aubergine this week so that's quite big right so no wonder we're protruding a fair bit but i've definitely noticed that like my abs are gone so when i'm sat down and i try and sit up uh you can see them sort of like bulge at the front so definitely didn't have enough abs before we started this because they have they have officially left the chat but yeah that's prego bum look at me i'm pregnant <laughs> I love it. I love seeing my body change every single day, it feels like at the moment, but especially every week. Um, I love watching it change. I love seeing bump grow. Um, yeah, I'm I'm absolutely amazed by all the changes. I am definitely nervous about how my body's gonna feel and look at the end of it. Um, but I'm kind of hoping that this kind of this respect that I've gathered for my body over the last few years really learning about my cycle and getting in touch with like my hormones and stuff and everything that my body can do I'm really hoping that that kind of like carries me through but I'm definitely nervous about how I might feel about my body at the end of it because you just don't know um how much loose skin you're gonna have how much stretching how many stretch marks um how it's all gonna hang how it's gonna look how it's gonna feel my boobs are going to be trashed <laughs> and we are hope i am hoping to breastfeed but that like feels really overwhelming i saw a statistic today that said 34 percent of 
people breastfeed these days. Um, and that made me a little bit sad because, like, not because I think that everybody should breastfeed and breastfed is best. Fed is 100% best. You do whatever you need to do for you. Stand strong on that. Um, but it just kind of made me sad that it feels like there's so many people struggling with it. And it made me sad because I don't, like, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Does that make sense? So I'm a little bit nervous about that because it is something that I've always wanted to do. But at the same time, I'm not going to put that much pressure on myself that I make myself ill with worry or make baby ill or anything if it's not working out. Like we'll do whatever we need to do. But um, that is the plan. And uh, if it does go well, <laughs> my boobs are going to be on the floor. <laughs> which is an interesting one to think about because again, I feel like I've spent so much of my life hating my boobs because they're just, they're, they're, they're on the larger side and I got bullied for them at school and I feel like I've just embraced them over the last sort of five years and then they're gonna change again. So yeah, it's definitely interesting thinking about how, trying to imagine how your body's gonna look and I just don't think you can because you've got no idea how it's, how it's gonna all end up, so. That will be an interesting journey to go on as well. But apart from that, I don't think I've got anything else to report, really. Um, we're looking at some of the Black Friday deals um, for furniture and some of the bigger items, although we're pretty much sorted on the big stuff. So we've got our travel system. We also have a next to me cot that is sorted. Um, we just kind of need a dressing like a changing dresser. Not gonna go for a changing table, because I kind of feel like that probably be a little bit redundant for us. You do you, you buy whatever you wanna buy for your baby, right? <laughs> um, but for me personally, I think it's it's it, that wouldn't be practical. However, we need a chest of drawers basically because we need more storage for baby clothes. So you can get the, change, you can get the changing dressers, which are essentially a, a chest of drawers, but then they have a little a lip around the top so you can, put a changing station on top. And then when you're no longer using it as a changing station, you can then pop the kids' books and toys and more storage on top of it. So basically it's a storage solution that also doubles up as a little changing desk, um, but you'll probably want to have a changing station down here and one upstairs as well. Um, so I'm not putting too much kind of like pressure on that as a changing area. <clears throat> but that's one thing that we do want to get is a changing dresser maybe like a little bookcase or something that can also fit in the room we're not going to get their cot bed just yet because they'll be staying with us in the next to me cot for the first six months or whatever so we'll deal with that at a later date and um, we're going to try and keep the double bed in the spare room for as long as possible so if one of us needs to sneak off and have like a semi-decent night's sleep they can do I think that'd be really important to tag team that. Um, so yeah, it's basically just a changing dress up. We wanna get like a little high chair with a newborn attachment. Um, I've seen one that's really nice that would kind of like go with our decor and it kind of goes from birth to 12 years. So it's an investment piece that you just get that and it kind of like adapts and then it's got loads of different things on it that like goes from a newborn you've got like a little newborn rocker but then you can attach it to the high chair so if you're cooking and you're not baby wearing you could have baby in that thing in the kitchen you know what I mean so that's one thing we want to get and a babe a nice baby sling and a baby carrier because I tried baby wearing <laughs> at the um, baby and toddler show and I absolutely loved it so definitely, definitely want to get a sling. I've got my eye on a couple that I think are really nice that are going into the sales. So I'm like poised, ready to buy because they are, they're gonna, there's, there's gonna be some bargains to be had there. So I'm gonna get those. And um, Chris is investigating the carrier side of things as well. And yeah, I think that's probably it. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably it for the big items, but then it's just like the smaller items that all add up as well like a little, you know, like a little baby bath and um, like a baby thermometer, nail kit, like all those, like the snot sucker thing that I see people talk about a lot. Um, there's like loads of little things and like the sleeping bags and all that kind of stuff. They're all, like, they're like maybe like 10, 20 pounds a pop, but they all add up, do you know what I mean? So we're just gonna start trying to find some things in the sales um, and then just slowly build up things from our list as we go over the next sort of few months 
and, and go from there. I have been getting some brands reaching out, which is so lovely. Um, I know it's a business. <laughs> like, at the end of the day, it's my job, isn't it? So of course I'm gonna get brands reaching out. And they're not sending me things because they really like me and they think I'm cool. They're sending me things in the hope that I might enjoy the product and share it with you guys and they're gonna make more sales. I understand it's a two way transaction or whatever, um, but it is still really nice to have been noticed by some of these um, amazing brands, especially when it's stuff that was already on our baby list to get. Um, and to have them like in my inbox wanting to chat to me and stuff, that's really cool. And also with friends and family who have asked if there's anything that we want or need, um, we're just trying to be really specific with that. So um, like if like aunties and uncles and stuff who message and they're like, we'd love to buy you a gift for baby, but we don't wanna just get you something that you don't want or need, what would you like? I love that approach. <laughs> I love that approach for gifting because it, A, it stops any duplicates. B, it stops them buying stuff that you just won't use, or C, stops you stops them buying stuff that you, you just don't like. Because I think a lot of big things for children are gonna be in your house for a very long time. And if they're really ugly, <laughs> I know it's about the practicality side of things as, as number one. But also if it's not like, it doesn't fit your color scheme, it can be quite jarring, especially some of these like kids' toys and, and kids' bits of furniture. So I think it's actually really lovely that people have reached out and just sort of said, look, we want to be practical with this. Is there anything you need? So we're just kind of um, putting together a list of things that we do need, like from things from like five pounds upwards, you know, so it's not like, I'm not saying, yeah, actually you can buy this crib, it's 400 pounds. <laughs> but you know, like little things like the bath, baby bath or um, like the nail care set or uh, maybe like a sleeping bag or something like that. And dishing those out to people who've asked what exactly what it is that we want and need and then hoping that that might also cut down on the amount of unnecessary stuff if that makes sense i've had a lot of people in my dms on instagram saying that people always buy like newborn clothes and then you they grow out of them so quickly and then you're left with no clothes as well so again like mum and dad really love like going into the shops and looking at baby clothes and stuff and they send us pictures they send us pictures and they're like do you like this one we, we want to get this do you like it and we either say yes or no or you know yeah we love it but in a different color and then they get different sizes as well so we're gonna have different sizes of baby clothes um instead of like just a load of newborn stuff that they grow out of instantly and don't get to wear so but it's tricky isn't it because this is our first baby and i think the way we kind of feel about it at the moment we might be in the one and done camp i think we're, we'd be kind of okay with that um so you're potentially only going to do this once and yeah you just kind of it it you're giddy you're excited and you want to investigate all the things that are out there and get the things that you want and that you love and i'm sure there will be things that we buy or things that we get that with hindsight like six months down the line we're like oh that was a bit of a waste actually we didn't really use that that's gonna happen regardless because that happens with all kinds of stuff in life and it's definitely gonna happen with baby stuff especially when you're doing it for the first time you've got no clue but i think that's part of the excitement of it all isn't it just just going with the flow and doing what you want to do and what you feel fits your journey um, so that's what we're doing. We're being very, very sensible and I'm researching the shit out of everything <laughs> to, to get the things that I think are gonna fit our lifestyle and our house and everything. Um, but yeah, there'll be there'll definitely be things that we buy that maybe we would have chosen something else with a bit of experience or, or whatever, but I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I am excited, but I'm not going OTT. Um, because there will always be close, you know? Like there'll always be things like that that you can just pick up whenever. It's only if I see something that is like very seasonal, like very autumnal or whatever that you just don't think you'll be able to get again that I might pick up, but I've probably got like maybe five outfits for baby, if that. And um, I'm happy with that until we get a little bit closer to the time and ha maybe have a good idea about, you know, how big they're gonna be or whatever. 
or just like put in an emergency order when they're here and be like, ah, oh, it's a boy or it's a girl and um, this is how big they are, quick. Do an online order on H&M or something. So I don't know, we'll see. But I'm just, we're just so excited. We're so giddy, um, movements are getting so strong, which is amazing. Um, Chris can feel them, I can feel them and it's just, it's magical. It, re it really is magical. I just, I'm loving every single second of it. And um, we're both very, very excited. So yeah. Anyway, listen, I'm gonna go microwave this cup of tea because it's gone cold. And finish my um, all brand mush. <sighs> Delicious. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching again. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>